everybody. Welcome to Busy Living Sober. This is Elizabeth Chance, and today is episode 320. 320. I can't even believe that I have 320. Um, today we are sponsored by Soberlink. We need to talk about alcohol recovery in the workplace. Talking about talking about sobriety and proving it to your employer can be so difficult and our friends at Soberlink want to help. If you need a reliable way to present your documented proof of sobriety to a boss, loved one, Soberlink can help. Soberlink is a high-tech portable breathalyzer system that uses facial recognition technology to verify identity. It has unique sensors to ensure that no other air sources are being used and sends results directly to your specified contacts. So there is no questioning whether or not you took the test and whether or not you alter the reporting. This is why Soberlink's remote alcohol monitoring system is considered the gold standard. Being in recovery from alcohol does not define the future of your career. Um, let Soberlink help. Learn more about Soberlink and request a $50 promo code if you go to www.soberlink.com slash BLS for busy living sober. All right, I'm a day late. I'm a day late. It's uh, Thursday. I normally put it out on Wednesday, and I'm going to be totally honest here. I recorded on Tuesday. I was going to put it up yesterday morning. I got up at like the crack of dawn, and it was the i couldn't do it it was the the whatever the sound with the audio had double recorded me and it was awful i couldn't torture you but the other problem was i over then my day started and i was off to the races so here we are one day late and i hope that um nobody's too upset with me because guess what sometimes we make mistakes and sometimes we have to take an extra day and it's okay it's okay i um i needed to take that day and then, of course, I went to those feelings. Does anybody going to, is anybody going to relate to this? I messed up. Screw it. I'm done. I'm not putting this out here this week. I'll just wait till next week. Do you relate to that? Do you relate to that? Um, it's kind of crazy. And that I think this way, but I think there are a lot of people who are like, oh my God, I'm just going to throw in the towel. I screwed up. I drank. I didn't want to drink, but I drank, and this isn't working, and I can't do it, and forget it. I'm done. I'm out. I'm not doing this anymore. Can you relate to that? Or when you're on a diet, like I've done that so many times. I've gone on a diet, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm going to stay, whatever it is. I've done every diet in the entire universe. I've done keto. I've done Weight Watchers. I've done Jenny Craig. I've done Nutrisystem. I've done every one of them that you can do, um, and uh and then I mess up and I'm like, forget it. I'm done. It was kind of the same way about the podcast. I'm like, forget it. I've been doing this for three, five and a half years, 320 episodes in who really cares? Does it even matter that I'm doing this? And, um, I think the answer is, yeah, it does matter that I'm doing this. And I do think that the people that do listen, I love you guys. And you've been listening to me from, I don't even know how long you've been listening to me, but I'm grateful that you're listening to me. And for that, I am going to continue to show up. And some days it might be a day late. I pray it isn't going to be a day late much long. I mean, very often, just this week, it was a day late. And I'm not going to throw it all away. But we tend to throw things all away, right? I, um, it's that sense of like, we judge ourselves so harshly and right now there's so many things in the universe and it's not even like just in the United States it's all over the world it's just like this it's the planets it's if you I mean I, I talk to all these astrologer people and you might think that I'm crazy here but it's where we are mercury and retrograde and these solar eclipses and all this other stuff it's like it really has something to do with how we are working on on the actual ground on the earth and so right now we're all going through a lot of stuff it's really um it's hard it's hard we're going through hard times and we all are going through them and it's kind of interesting because i'm taking this class as you guys know i the people at least who have been listening to me for a while know that i'm taking a wellness course and um just to better my knowledge and learn more stuff not only for me but for like my listeners and to people like you it's giving me more knowledge. And we were talking yesterday about food 
And as I just mentioned, the diets. I've been on so many different diets, right? So many different diets. It's kind of funny, though. People get sober and they lose all this weight right away. I, that didn't happen to me. I mean, I lost some weight. Obviously, the bloat went away, but I started eating all this ice cream. So, of course, I mean, it didn't all go away. And um, But it's okay because I needed to replace it with something. I can't take it so seriously, but... We can only do one thing at a time. It's like we eat our meals one bite at a time. We don't eat the entire meal in one big bat bite. So looking at life, like I'm just not gonna throw in the towel just because I screwed up a little bit. And um, so yesterday I'm in this class and we're talking about food and diets and what diet are you on and what diet have you been on and recognizing that um, Recognizing that we have to, we want to change something is the first step, right? We realize that we don't like something about ourselves and we're like, we want to change it. I'm drinking too much. I'm eating too much sugar. I'm, um, I'm gossiping too much. I'm shopping too much. I'm spending too much money. I'm, um, whatever it is you're like unhappy about, cause we all have something each day and we all know about the problem. So I could sit here and go on now ad nauseum about all the problems that are going on in the world, right? I could go on and on and on. I could talk about how what's going on with the fentanyl crisis is horrible. Nobody's really talking about it that much in the news, but it's really, really bad. And some people are even calling it global terrorism. So I can identify that that's a problem, which we all know. We all know that gas prices are too much. Everything's too expensive. We all know this. So we know the problem. What is the solution? What is our action that we are going to get into personally, each person that's listening to this, what are you going to do personally to make yourself feel better and not have this problem that we, that's bothering you so much? What are you doing to conquer that problem? What are you doing to say, you know what, I'm going to do something different that I've never done before. And as scary as the change is, I'm going to do it. What are you going to do to change it? What are you going to try and change just today? I'm just saying today. I'm just saying this for today, November 3rd. At, it's 9.30 here on the East Coast. What are you going to do to change what you don't like about yourself? So for me, I'm just going to use this as an example. I, so I haven't had a drink in a long time. So that's I can check that off the list. That's not one of my things. Right now... I want to feel better in my skin, in my body. I want it. So I'm going to yoga in a little bit. Um, and I'm going to do intermittent fasting. So you're like, okay, well, what does that look like? So I'm not going to eat anything until 11 a.m. And I am going to stop eating at 7 p.m. And I'm going to recalibrate, I hope, my system by doing intermittent fasting. Um, it's something that I've heard is really good for your body. And in my class, they talked about it a lot yesterday and how great it is to, um, to just give your body a break during those hours. That's 15 or 16 hours. That's going to, I don't know the numbers, but anyway, 15 or 16 hours that I'm not going to eat anything. And I'm making that my, for today. So I haven't had anything to eat. I had a cup of coffee. I had some water with lemon. Great way to start the day, water with lemon. And eating an apple a day, by the way, is the best thing for you. And I'm like, my eyes are clearer. Do you see that? My eyes are, your eyes and your teeth get clearer from just eating an apple a day. So eating an apple a day and having my warm, my warm hot water with lemon before I start eating anything is like a great way. So those are little things that I started the day with. What can you do to start your day? And let's say you wake up and you're like, I didn't do it. Oh my gosh, I didn't drink the water or I didn't have the apple. What am I going to do now? Well, tomorrow's a new day. Eat the apple now, later in the day, before you go to bed, have an apple. Don't have those cookies that you normally reach for. Don't have that cake that you'd normally reach for. Have an apple. Have an apple. Apples are expensive now. It's kind of crazy. At least the ones I like. I like Honeycrisp. I don't know what I'm, you guys like, but that's like my favorite. They used to be the green ones, but now it's the Honeycrisp. And, um, but going to this um, place of, you know, self, we judge ourselves so harshly. 
and we are so as a, as a, as a society it's just the world it's not even just here because i go to this class with people from all over the world and everybody's first thoughts in the morning for some reason are negative and we wake up and we have these negative thoughts of ourselves negative thoughts about what's going on in the world instead of having a, our first thought be something positive like it's that so hard it is it's hard for me to get up and go okay i'm having a good day i'm gonna wake up with a good thing i have to do things to change my thinking change the negative i we all know everything's going to shit okay great so what are we gonna do are we gonna keep watching horrible news and keep going and perpetuating the negative or what can we do to change it we can just change ourselves we can be happier, we can be nicer, we can be more open, we can do all these other things that bring us peace and joy, that quiet that we can come to inside of ourselves, that place of, um, that place of where we can be like, I'm okay. Now, putting on your favorite song in the morning is also a huge one. I did it last night. I didn't do it in the morning. I did it when I got in bed. I was like, and I'm like dancing. I'm like, whoop, whoop. I was all ready to go to bed, but for some reason I just needed a little whoop. I got to get up and dance. Put on your favorite song. What's your favorite song in the morning? Hmm? I love to listen to, um, I am a huge old disco and 80s fan, so I put on my 80s songs and I just get busy and I dance, 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 dance. Um, changing the way you think. Don't throw in the towel if you mess up one thing. That doesn't mean you have to throw everything away if you just screwed up one thing. Okay? If you didn't want to drink, you're like, I don't want to drink. I don't like what it makes me feel like. I don't want to drink anymore. And I tell myself I don't want to drink, but I drink anyway. And do you throw it all away? I can tell you this. I did not really stop drinking until I stopped drinking. I woke up one day. I was like, I cannot do this again. I got on my knees. I prayed to God. I said, please help me. Um, I don't want to do this anymore. And for some reason, that was the first time I ever wanted to quit. And that was the last time I ever had a drink. I was sincere about it. I really, nobody was taking me to rehab. Nobody was, um, I didn't have a gun to my head. I didn't have the police after me. I didn't have sirens following me. Um, I just was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And people ask me all the time, well, why did, you know, were you, were you really an alcoholic? And I'm like, uh, well, I was a blackout drinker from 13 to 37. I don't remember one thing I did. Um, many years I don't remember. I have to call one of my closest friends, Jeannie, who's been on this podcast before, and be like, what What happened? What What was that like in 1988, 89, 90? What happened? Can you remind me? What were we doing? How do I know this person? Um, I don't remember a lot of those times. And um, it's okay. It's part of me. It's my pre-reality. Um, that was the girl I was. That's how I managed life. I tell people all the time, if I weren't an alcoholic, I don't know if I'd be alive because uh, their feelings were just so overwhelming that they, I, they were going to take over everything. And um, they were going to take over my life and these feelings. And I didn't want to have a feeling because that's what I, I, if I have a feeling, I'm going to break. And I don't want to break. I was too scared to break. So give me a drink. And then I don't have to think about anything. So I, come, I decide to get sober and I decide that I'm going to go, I decide I'm going to go to 12 step. And the reason I decided to go to 12 step was that I knew that every person I've hung out with in my life, um, was a big drinker. That's who I like to hang out with. I don't want to hang out with teetotalers. I don't want to hang out with people who don't drink. I don't want to hang out with like boring people and they're not boring, but that was what I thought back then. And um, I'm like, I, what am I going to do? So I decided to go there because I knew that people were like-minded and they weren't going to be drinking either. So I go there and I get, they say, oh, you need to get a sponsor. You need to get a sponsor. You need to get a sponsor. So I get a sponsor and I ask this person to help me. And I love the other name that they call them, fellow traveler. So I asked this person to help me along the way. And she said yes, that she would. And um, the one thing that she said to me, or I learned in one of the meetings, was that you look at a drink 
and you play the tape. And I was like, what does that mean, play the tape? So play the tape of what happens when you drink. So when I drink, right, when I drink, I can't have one because I'm an alcoholic. And it's this thing that happens in my brain. It's the frontal cortex of my brain. So I put that in my brain and I then want more, 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 more. It's not a moral decision. It's just this thing that I have in my brain. I can't stop it. It's the craziest thing. It's this craving I have. It's an allergy I have to alcohol. So I have a little bit and I want more. And then my, so my tape that I started to play in my mind was, okay, I'm going to pick up this one drink and I'm going to wake up the next day and I'm going to be like, what the hell did I do? Who is this person in my bed? How did this happen? What was I thinking? Oh my gosh, I go, I went off to the races and it might not happen the first time I drink. It might take 10 times. It might take 20 times. It might take 40 times. I don't know how long it would take. I don't want to chance it. Um, I spent enough time doing that. Um, I know without a doubt that it's going to end in a bad way. So I played that tape in my head. I'd be like, okay, so this is what happens. Cause I've watched it so many times, right? I'd watch these times and I'm like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to take, I'm going to be good. I'm not going to drink too much. I'm not going to embarrass myself. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to, you know, have one drink. Well, I never had one drink. I, I, I still, I still look at people when I go out to eat sometimes and they order a really expensive glass of wine and it's still sitting there at the end of the meal. You're like, you ordered that really expensive glass of wine and it's still sitting there. You didn't even drink it. How does that happen? I never could do that. I'm like, I got to drink it. And then I drink another one and I drink another one. And you know, I, I even took a wine <clears throat> course at one point because I was like oh I'm gonna be a sommelier and learn how about, about wine well the crazy thing is is that I have one glass of wine after that I don't even remember what any of them tasted like you could have given me rock gut and it would have been like this is fabulous give me more um I, that's the way I drink that is just the way I drink and again it's not a moral issue it's just I've got this disease I have this disease and um, it's a disease, it's a dis-ease in front, inside of me. And um, I just overdo it all the time. And the reality is I don't care what anybody else thinks about me. It's how I think about me. And I hated myself afterwards. Hated myself. And that's why I, I quit because I just couldn't do it anymore. I was like sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. I was sick and tired of feeling like, what did I do? What did I say? Oh my God, my kids saw me like this or my kids saw me like that. And what kind of mom am I that gets drunk? And, you know, I, somebody was talking the other day about Halloween and how they went out trick or treating and they not only had treats for the kids, but then they had the mommy and daddy treat. They're like, oh, kids, you want the grown up treat, which was a shot of tequila. That was not going on when I was a kid or when I was raising my kids. I did not ever have that. Um, there was not trick or treating with booze. It's kind of crazy. Now it is, and um, you're like, how do I get through that? And this, there was a person that was on the meeting that talked about that the other day, and she made it through. And kudos to her. You know, um, enough, enough, enough. This is about you. How are you going to take care of you, boo boo? How are you going to do this so that you don't feel terrible about yourself anymore? How are you going to do it? How are you going to not throw in the towel just if you do mess up? How are you going to get back on the horse? What other people think is none of your business. Take care of you. I'm splitting this early today, guys, because uh, the reality is I've had, I'm crazy again today. I, I want to get to my yoga class and it starts in 15 minutes. So I'm going to go do that. And um, I'm going to cut this early so I can take care of me. But next week, I'm really excited because the woman who interviewed me for the article that if any of you don't know, I was in, there was an article about me in the Washington Post. You can find it on my website on busylivingsober.com. Check it out. They, she talks about a new term that I never heard about it, heard about, which is AUD, 
alcohol use disorder. So now we're not called alcoholics. It's alcohol use disorder. It's very interesting. And I want to find out more about why she came up with that, how she came up with that. And um, she's going to be on next week. So please tune in next week to listen to Nancy. And um, she is a Washington Post um, writer. So it'll be really cool to have her on. So she'll be on next Tuesday. And um, please tune in. Please check out the article. I hope you like it. I hope it may help you, especially during the holidays. And if you're listening and you're not an alcoholic and you're like, but I want to help my alcoholic family member or loved one or friend or whatever, list, read that article because it talks a lot about how having different kinds of drinks at your holiday or at any party is really important. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Again, sorry I was a day late, um, but I am here today. And I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please email me at elizabeth at elizabethchance.com. It's E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H at elizabethchance.com. And until next time, keep getting busy, living sober, take care. Um, don't let one mess up wreck your entire goals that you want to set for you keep trying keep trying don't ever give up and until next time keep getting busy living sober take care everybody bye